रेनु रे On this occasion I will convey the history of Simeon the First the Great. Tsar Simeon the First the Great ruled over Bulgaria from 893 to 927, during the First Bulgarian Empire. Simeon's successful campaigns against the Byzantines, Magyars, and Serbs led Bulgaria to its greatest territorial expansion ever, making it the most powerful state in contemporary Eastern and Southeast Europe. His reign was also a period of unmatched cultural prosperity and enlightenment later deemed the golden age of Bulgarian culture. During Simeon's rule, Bulgaria spread over a territory between the Aegean, the Adriatic and the Black Sea. The newly independent Bulgarian Orthodox Church became the first new patriarchate besides the Pent Archie, and Bulgarian Glagolitic and Cyrillic translations of Christian texts spread all over the Slavic world of the time. It was at the Preslav Literary School in the 890s that the Cyrillic alphabet was developed. Halfway through his reign, Simeon assumed the title of emperor, having prior to that been styled prince. Simeon was born in 864 or 865, as the third son of Nias Boris I of Krum's dynasty. As Boris was the ruler who Christianized Bulgaria in 865, Simeon was a Christian all his life. Because his eldest brother Vladimir was designated heir to the Bulgarian throne, Boris I intended Simeon to become a high-ranking cleric, possibly Bulgarian archbishop, and sent him to the leading university of Constantinople to receive theological education when he was 13 or 14. He took the name Simeon as a novice in a monastery in Constantinople. During the decade he spent in the Byzantine capital, he received excellent education and studied the rhetoric of Demosthenes and Aristotle. He also learned fluent Greek, to the extent that he was referred to as the half Greek in Byzantine chronicles. He is speculated to have been tutored by Patriarch Phocios I of Constantinople, but this is not supported by any source. Around 888, Simeon returned to Bulgaria and settled at the newly established royal monastery of Preslav at the mouth of the Tika, where, under the guidance of Nama Preslav, he engaged in active translation of important religious works from Greek to medieval Bulgarian, aided by other students from Constantinople. Meanwhile, Vladimir had succeeded Boris, who had retreated to a monastery, as ruler of Bulgaria. Vladimir attempted to reintroduce paganism in the empire and possibly signed an anti-Byzantine pact with Arnulf of Carinthia forcing Boris to re-enter political life. Boris had Vladimir imprisoned and blinded, and then appointed Simeon as the new ruler. This was done at an assembly in Preslav which also proclaimed Bulgarian as the only language of state and church and moved the Bulgarian capital from Pliska to Preslav, to better cement the recent conversion. It is not known why Boris did not place his second son, Gavril, on the throne, but instead preferred Simeon. See also, Byzantine, Bulgarian Wars, Bulgarian, Hungarian Wars, Byzantine, Bulgarian War of 894-896, and Medieval Bulgarian Army. With Simeon on the throne, the long-lasting peace with the Byzantine Empire established by his father was about to end. A conflict arose when Byzantine Emperor Leo VI the Wise, allegedly acting under pressure from his mistress Zoe Zayoutsina and her father Stylianos Zayoutsas, moved the marketplace for Bulgarian goods from Constantinople to Thessaloniki, where the Bulgarian merchants were heavily taxed. The Bulgarians sought protection by Simeon, who in turn complained to Leo. However, the Byzantine emperor ignored his embassy. Unable to effectively respond to the Bulgarian campaign due to the engagement of their forces against the Arabs, the Byzantines convinced the Magyars to attack Bulgaria, promising to transport them across the Danube using the Byzantine navy. Leo VI may have also concluded an agreement with Arnulf to make sure that the Franks did not support Simeon against the Magyars. In addition, 
the talented commander Nikephoros Fikas was called back from southern Italy to lead a separate army against Bulgaria in 895 with the mere intention to overawe the Bulgarians. Simeon, unaware of the threat from the north, rushed to meet Fikas' forces, but the two armies did not engage in a fight. Instead, the Byzantines offered peace, informing him of both the Byzantine foot and maritime campaign, but intentionally did not notify him of the planned Magyar attack. Simeon did not trust the envoy and, after sending him to prison, ordered the Byzantine navy's route into the Danube closed off with ropes and chains, intending to hold it until he had dealt with Fikas. Despite the problems they encountered because of the fencing, the Byzantines ultimately managed to ferry the Magyar forces led by Arpad's son Lyuntika across the Danube, possibly near modern Galati, and assisted them in pillaging the nearby Bulgarian lands. Once notified of the surprise invasion, Simeon headed north to stop the Magyars, leaving some of his troops at the southern border to prevent a possible attack by Fikas. Simeon's two encounters with the enemy in northern Dobruja resulted in Magyar victories, forcing him to retreat to Drostar. After pillaging much of Bulgaria and reaching Preslav, the Magyars returned to their lands, but not before Simeon had concluded an armistice with Byzantium towards the summer of 895. A complete peace was delayed, as Leo VI required the release of the Byzantine captives from the trade war. Having dealt with the pressure from the Magyars and the Byzantines, Simeon was free to plan a campaign against the Magyars looking for retribution. He negotiated a joint force with the Magyars' eastern neighbors, the Pechenegs, and imprisoned the Byzantine envoy Leo Quiros Fuktis in order to delay the release of the captives until after the campaign against the Magyars. This would allow him to renegotiate the peace conditions in his favor. In an exchange of letters with the envoy, Simeon refused to release the captives and ridiculed Leo VI's astrological abilities. Using a Magyar invasion in the lands of the neighboring Slavs in 896 as a casus belli, Simeon headed against the Magyars together with his Pechenegh allies, defeating them completely in the Battle of Southern Butt and making them leave Atelkos forever and settle in Pannonia. Following the defeat of the Magyars, Simeon finally released the Byzantine prisoners in exchange for Bulgarians captured in 895. Claiming that not all prisoners had been released, Simeon once again invaded Byzantium in the summer of 896, heading directly to Constantinople. He was met in Thrace by a hastily assembled Byzantine army, but annihilated the Byzantine forces in the Battle of Bulgarophagon. Arming Arab captives and sending them to fight with the Bulgarians as a desperate measure, Leo VI managed to repel the Bulgarians from Constantinople which they had besieged. The war ended with a peace treaty which formally lasted until around Leo VI's death in 912 and under which Byzantium was obliged to pay Bulgaria an annual tribute. Under the treaty, the Byzantines also ceded an area between the Black Sea and Stranza to the Bulgarian Empire. Meanwhile, Simeon had also imposed his authority over Serbia in return for recognizing Petr Gajanikovic as their ruler. Simeon often violated the peace treaty with Byzantium, attacking and conquering Byzantine territory on several occasions, such as in 904, when the Bulgarian raids were used by Arabs led by the Byzantine renegade Leo of Tripoli to undertake a maritime campaign and seize Thessaloniki. After the Arabs plundered the city, it was an easy target for Bulgaria and the nearby Slavic tribes. In order to dissuade Simeon from capturing the city and populating it with Slavs, Leo VI was forced to make further territorial concessions to the Bulgarians in the modern region of Macedonia. With the Treaty of 904, all Slavic inhabited lands in modern southern Macedonia and southern Albania were ceded to the Bulgarian Empire, with the border line running some 20 kilometers north of Thessaloniki. The death of Leo VI on May 11, 912 and the accession of his infant son Constantine VII under the guidance of Leo's brother Alexander, who expelled Leo's wife Zoe from the palace, constituted a great opportunity for Simeon to attempt another campaign against Constantinople, the conquest of which remained the dream of his life. In the spring of 913, Simeon's envoys, who had arrived in Constantinople to renew the peace of 896, were sent away by Alexander, who refused to pay the annual tribute, 
urging Simeon to prepare for war. Before Simeon could attack, Alexander died on June 6, 913, leaving the empire in the hands of a regency council headed by Patriarch Nicholas Mistikos. Many residents of Constantinople did not recognize the young emperor and instead supported the pretender Constantine Dukas, which, exacerbated by revolts in southern Italy and the planned Arab invasion in eastern Anatolia, was all to Simeon's advantage. Nicholas Mistikos tried to discourage Simeon from invading Byzantium in a long series of pleading letters, but the Bulgarian ruler nevertheless attacked in full force in late July or August 913 reaching Constantinople without any serious resistance. The anarchy in Constantinople had ceased after the murder of the pretender Constantine Dukas, however, and a government had promptly been formed with Patriarch Nicholas at the helm. This urged Simeon to raise his siege and enter peace negotiations, to the joy of the Byzantines. The protracted negotiations resulted in the payment of the arrears of Byzantine tribute, the promise that Constantine VII would marry one of Simeon's daughters, and, most importantly, Simeon's official recognition as Emperor of the Bulgarians by Patriarch Nicholas in the Blackirni Palace. Shortly after Simeon visited Constantinople, Constantine's mother Zoe returned to the palace on the insistence of the young emperor and immediately proceeded to eliminate the regents. Through a plot, she managed to assume power in February 914, practically removing Patriarch Nicholas from the government, disowning and obscuring his recognition of Simeon's imperial title, and rejecting the planned marriage of her son to one of Simeon's daughters. Simeon had to resort to war to achieve his goals. He invaded Thrace in the summer of 914 and captured Adrianople. Zoe was quick to send Simeon numerous presents in order to conciliate him, and she managed to convince him to cede back Adrianople and withdraw his army. In the following years, Simeon's forces were engaged in the northwestern Byzantine provinces around Drac and Thessaloniki, but did not make a move against Constantinople. By 917, Simeon was preparing for yet another war against Byzantium. He attempted to conclude an anti-Byzantine union with the Pesian eggs, but his envoys could not match the financial resources of the Byzantines, who succeeded in outbidding them. The Byzantines hatched a large-scale campaign against Bulgaria and also tried to persuade the Serbian prince Petr Gajanikovic to attack the Bulgarians with Magyar support. In 917, a particularly strong Byzantine army led by Leo Fikas the Elder, son of Nikephoros Fikas, invaded Bulgaria accompanied by the Byzantine navy under the command of Romanos Likopenos, which sailed to the Bulgarian Black Sea ports. En route to Mazembria, where they were supposed to be reinforced by troops transported by the navy, Fikas forces stopped to rest near the river of Akelus, not far from the port of Ankyalos. Once informed of the invasion, Simeon rushed to intercept the Byzantines, and attacked them from the nearby hills while they were resting disorganized. In the Battle of Akelus of August 20, 917, one of the largest in medieval history, the Bulgarians completely routed the Byzantines and killed many of their commanders, although Fikas managed to escape to Mazembria. Decades later, Leo the Deacon would write that piles of bones can still be seen today at the river Akelus, where the fleeing army of the Romans was then infamously slain. The planned Pechenegh attack from the north also failed, as the Pechenegs quarreled with Admiral Likopenos, who refused to transport them across the Danube to aid the main Byzantine army. The Byzantines were not aided by Serbs and Magyars either, the Magyars were engaged in Western Europe as Frankish allies, and the Serbs under Petr Gajanikovic were reluctant to attack Bulgaria because Michael of Zayamelj, an ally of Bulgaria, had notified Simeon of their plans. Simeon's army quickly followed up the victory of Akelus with another success. The Bulgarians sent to pursue the remnants of the Byzantine army approached Constantinople and encountered Byzantine forces under Leo Fikas, who had returned to the capital, at the village of Katasurta in the immediate proximity of Constantinople. The Bulgarian regiments attacked and again defeated the Byzantines, destroying some of their last units before returning to Bulgaria. Immediately after that campaign, Simeon sought to punish the Serbian ruler Petr Gajanikovic who had attempted to betray him by concluding an alliance with the Byzantines. 
Simeon sent an army led by two of his commanders, Theodor Sigrica and Marme, to Serbia. The two managed to persuade Petr to attend a personal meeting, during which he was enchained and carried off to Bulgaria, where he died in a dungeon. Simeon put Pavlbrnovic, prior to that an exile in Bulgaria, on the Serbian throne, thus restoring the Bulgarian influence in Serbia for a while. Meanwhile, the Byzantine military failures forced another change of government in Constantinople, the Admiral Romanos Likopenos replaced Zoe as regent of the young Constantine VII in 919, forcing her back into a convent. Romanos betrothed his daughter Helena Lekapine to Constantine and advanced to the rank of co-emperor in December 920, effectively assuming the government of the empire, which was largely what Simeon had planned to do. No longer able to climb to the Byzantine throne by diplomatic means, the infuriated Simeon once again had to wage war to impose his will. Between 920 and 922, Bulgaria increased its pressure on Byzantium, campaigning in the west through Thessaly reaching the Isthmus of Corinth and in the east in Thrace, reaching and crossing the Dardanelles to lay siege on the town of Lampsacus. Seventeen Simeon's forces appeared before Constantinople in 921, when they demanded the deposition of Romanos and captured Adrianople, and 922, when they were victorious at Pigi, burned much of the Golden Horn and seized Bizyi. In the meantime, the Byzantines attempted to ignite Serbia against Simeon, but he substituted Pfl with Zaharij Pribasifiljevic, a former refugee at Constantinople that he had captured. Desperate to conquer Constantinople, Simeon planned a large campaign in 924 and sent envoys to the Fatimid Caliph Ubaid Allah al Mahdi Billah, who possessed a powerful navy which Simeon needed. The Caliph agreed and sent his own representatives back with the Bulgarians to arrange the alliance. However, the envoys were captured by the Byzantines at Calabria. Romanos offered peace to the Arabs, supplementing this offer with generous gifts, and ruined their union with Bulgaria. In Serbia, Zaharij was persuaded by the Byzantines to revolt against Simeon. Zaharij was supported by many Bulgarians exhausted from Simeon's endless campaigns against Byzantium. The Bulgarian emperor sent his troops under Sigrika and Marme, but they were routed and the two commanders beheaded, which forced Simeon to conclude an armistice with Byzantium in order to concentrate on the suppression of the uprising. Simeon sent an army led by Kaslav Klonomirovic in 924 to depose Zaharij. He was successful, as Zaharij fled to Croatia. After this victory, the Serbian nobility was invited to come to Bulgaria and bow to the new prince. However, he did not appear at the supposed meeting and all of them were beheaded. Bulgaria annexed Serbia directly. In the summer of 924, Simeon nevertheless arrived at Constantinople and demanded to see the Patriarch and the Emperor. He conversed with Romanos on the Golden Horn on September 9, 924 and arranged a truce, according to which Byzantium would pay Bulgaria an annual tax, but would be ceded back some cities on the Black Sea coast. During the interview of the two monarchs, two eagles are said to have met in the skies above and then to have parted one of them flying over Constantinople and the other heading to Thrace, as a sign of the irreconcilability of the two rulers. In his description of this meeting, Theophanes Continuatus mentions that the two emperors, conversed, which may indicate renewed Byzantine recognition of Simeon's imperial claims. Most likely after Patriarch Nicholas' death in 925, Simeon raised the status of the Bulgarian Orthodox Church to a patriarchate. This may be linked to Simeon's diplomatic relations with the papacy between 924 and 926, during which he demanded and received Pope John X's recognition of his title as Emperor of the Romans, truly equal to the Byzantine Emperor, and possibly the confirmation of a patriarchal dignity for the head of the Bulgarian Orthodox Church. In 926, Simeon's troops under Elagobadar invaded Croatia, at the time a Byzantine ally, but were completely defeated by the army of King Tomislav in the Battle of the Bosnian Highlands. Fearing a Bulgarian retribution, Tomislav agreed to abandon his union with Byzantium and make peace on the basis of the status quo, negotiated by the papal legate Maid Albert. 
In the last months of his life, Simeon prepared for another conflict with Constantinople despite Romano's desperate pleas for peace. On May 27, 927, Simeon died of heart failure in his palace in Preslav. Byzantine chroniclers tie his death to a legend, according to which Romanos decapitated a statue which was Simeon's inanimate double, and he died at that very hour. He was succeeded by his son Peter I, with George Sir Sabul, the new emperor's maternal uncle, initially acting as a regent. As part of the peace treaty signed in October 927 and reinforced by Peter's marriage to Maria, Romano's granddaughter, the existing borders were confirmed, as were the Bulgarian ruler's imperial dignity and the head of the Bulgarian church's patriarchal status. H. H. Howarth opined if he had lived, or if he had been succeeded by princes of the same martial character, it is very probable that a great Slav state reaching from the Adriatic to the Black Sea, which would have been a barrier to the Turks, might have been formed south of the Danube. That's the history that I can convey this time, I hope it's useful, don't forget to share, like and subscribe.